Hi, welcome back to Dolphin Learning. So today we're going to look at promissory notes, right? Uh, I'll quickly explain to you what promissory note is, and then we'll go through some very basic examples. Okay, so with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so you may ask, what is a promissory note, right? So a promissory note is a signed document containing a written promise to repay the borrowed amount to the lender on an ag agreed date, right? So that's just like, like an IOU type of situation where a person borrows some money from someone and just writes up an IOU saying that I'll owe you X amount of dollars on X day at X interest rate, right? That sort of thing. Now, a promissory note has the following things in it, right? It could have more, but it typically has, these are the common things that it must have, right? It has the borrower, that's called the maker, so that's the person who's making the, the promissory note. Right. It has the lender. That's the person who the maker is going to pay the money to. So that's why they could the call the pay as well. It has an issue date on the date on which the promise you note was issued on. It has the terms. So how long the promise you note is issued for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, a year, two year, whatever the situation might be. The face value of the note whether if it's a principal value or a maturity value. So whether if it's an interest bearing note or a non-interest bearing note, we'll get that into a second. And the interest rate on the note, right? So now you may ask, what is what is an interest bearing note and what is a non-interest bearing note, right? The difference between the two is, is that in an interest bearing note, you have the principal and you're calculating the interest amount on top of that and you have to pay that back at the end of the time right the end of the agreed date that you agree on you have to pay that back on that date whereas in a non-interest bearing note you're calculating you already have the maturity value and you're calculating the present value so it already accounts for the interest that you're going to be you're going to have to be paying back don't get confused we're going to look at an example so you have a clear idea what they are We'll look at both the simple interest and compound interest promissory notes in this video. Now, there's another thing that I'd like to point out with promissory notes. Because they're a legal note, they have something called a grace period. And it typically is for between like three to five days, right? Depending on the, the country or geographical area where you're located on. But a grace period is technically an extension from the date of maturity. So if it Perhaps if, if the loan of the note matures on January 31st and it was issued on January 1st, you would have up until, if we're considering if they have five days of grace period, you would have up until February 5th to, to repay that loan back. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to look at that there's no grace period and that the maturity value is the legal due date of the promissory note, right? So now let's look at what a promissory note looks like. So here we have a sample promissory note. It reads promissory note, January 1st, 2020, 2019. And it says that for the value received, person one promises to pay the order of bank one, two, three, Mars, Milky Way, with principal of $1,500 and accumulated interest at 7% per annum on January 1st, 2021, so practically two years later, right? Signed by person one. What do we have here? We have an issue date, right? The date this loan promissory note was issued on. The borrower or the maker of the, of the, of the note. The lender or the pay, in other words, who the borrower is going to pay to. The face value of the note, in this case, it's the principal because it includes the interest, right? The terms state that it includes the interest. So that's why we have an interest bearing promissory note, right? The terms again, 7% simple interest, and it's due on January 30, January 1st, 2021, so two years after that. And the person who signed it, right? Or in other words, the maker of the loan, the borrower who has signed the loan. So there we go, we have that. So this is what a typical note looks like. It has additional components to it well, uh, depending on the complexity of the note. But this is just what a basic note looks like. Now let's actually look at a simple example. Okay, so here we have an interest-bearing promissory note example. 
where we have that on a January on January 1st, Sean signs a two-year interest-bearing promissory note for 1500 at an interest of 7% per annum, simple interest, calculate the maturity value. So first of all, we know that it's a simple interest question. Second thing, you have to calculate a value of 1500. So the best thing to do in this situation, because we have to calculate the value of it in future, is to draw out a timeline. So when we do that, we get that he's borrowing the money on January 1st, 2019, and the money is going to be due or he has to pay it back at the end of year two, right? So somewhere around December 31st or January 1st of 2021, right? And there's an interest for 7% per annum and it's simple interest, right? Now, since it's simple interest, we can use our formula where we're calculating the maturity value because that's what we're going to be doing in this situation, calculating the value of it in year two with principal multiplied by one plus RT, right? Now you can check out, if you don't know about this equation, you can check it out. I'll leave the link down in description below, right? So you can check that out. But we know that the principal amount is 1500 that Sean's borrowing at an interest rate of 7%, right? With a time period being two years, right? It's all up in here. It's, I got that information from right here. So now all we have to do is just plug it into our equation and see what we get, right? So we have one plus 7% multiplied by two. So we get 1.14, right? Multiply that by 1500 and we get 1710. So in other words, we have here is 1500 multiplied by 7% at the end of year one, which is equal to $105. And at the end of year two, you take that same 1500 and multiply by 7%, you get another $105. And then you add 1500 plus $105 plus $105 to get to the 1710. Now let's look at the same example, but with compound interest, right? Okay, so we have the same question here, right? Where it reads that on January 1st, Sean signs a two-year interest-bearing promissory note for $1,500 at an interest of 7% compounded annually. Calculate the maturity value of it, right? Same compound interest. Since we're calculating maturity value, that means we're going to be calculating the future value of it. Now, to begin with, we're going to draw out a timeline, right? So when we draw out a timeline, we see that it's bought on January 1st, 2019. That's for two years with $1,500 and an interest of 7% compounded annually. So what that means, in other words, is that we take the 1500 and we compound it for year one. Whatever interest we get, we add that back to 1500 and then we compound it for another year in year two, right? So we'll have, we can use a, just a future value of a compound interest equation, right? Where we have future value is equal to present value. In this case, it's 1500 multiplied by one plus the interest rate to the power of number of period or term. So we have a present value of 1500, we have interest of 7%, and we have terms, which is two. So we take this information and plug it into our equation. So we get one plus 7% to the power of two, right? And we get 1.1449, multiply that by 1500, and it gives us 1717.35. The reason why this answer is different with compound interest is because the interest here in year one is equal to 1500 or the total value of the note in year one is equal to 1500 plus $105. And then in year two, you take that, so you take 1500 plus $105 worth of interest, which is equal to 1605, the value of the note. And you take that 1605 and then you multiply that by 7% to get the 171735, right? Whereas in a simple interest, for each of the years individually, you calculated it interest at 1500. So that's why you see the $7 or $17. I think it's $7 worth of difference. Anyways, now let's look at a non-interest bearing question. Okay, so here we have a non-interest bearing question and it states that what is the loan amount of a two-year non-interest bearing promissory note that has a face value of 5,000 and a discount rate of 3.5% per annum, simple interest? Again, simple interest question and a time value of money question. The first thing to do is draw out a timeline, right? 
and we have timeline from year zero to year two with the total value of 5,000 and an interest of 3.5% per annum, simple interest. Calculating the value of the loan or of the note in year zero, whatever it's going to be worth in year zero. To do that, we can use, since it's simple interest, we can use the formula principal is equal to maturity divided by one plus the rate times time period, right? We have the maturity at 5,000 because that's what the amount is at the end of year two. The rate is 3.5%, right? And time period is two years. And if we take, it in, take this information and put it into our equation, we get 5,000 divided by one plus 3.5% multiplied by two. So we get one 5,000 divided by 1.07. And we get $4,672.90. So in other words, the person who had borrowed this loan or this note was to receive $5,000. But they don't receive the $5,000 because there's an interest amount calculated here, right? And that $5,000 minus 4672.90 would give us the interest amount of $327. So... They ask for $5,000, which they'll have to pay back. But right now, what they'll get is $4,672.90 in year zero. So what that, that is what it basically means, right? Now let's get the same example, but using compound interest, okay? So let's do that now. Okay, so this equation, or this question states is the same question states that what is the total what is the loan amount of a two-year non-interest bearing promissory note that has a face value of five thousand and a discount rate of three point five percent compounded annually again compound interest the first thing to do is draw the timeline and the interest rate right again we still have the same five thousand but in this case it's being compounded the interest rate is being compounded so the five thousand when we calculate the present value in year one and in year zero respectively we'll just use the equation and calculate the value in year zero but it will it will be compounded in year one and it'll be compounded at the end of year zero so that's why we'll use the present value of uh, compound interest equation so when we do that we have present value is equal to future value divided by one plus i to the power of n right where we have future value of 5,000 divided uh, future value of 5,000 with interest of 3.5% and of two years, right? We simply just plug that into our equation and we get 1.071225, right? And divide that by 5,000 divide that by 1.071225 and we get $4,667.55. So practically, this would this would be the total amount that the borrower receives at uh, year zero, right? Though the person asked for five thousand dollars or has to pay back five thousand dollars, right? The uh, the value that they'll receive in year zero is practically four thousand six hundred and sixty-seven dollars and fifty-five cents. The remainder of whatever it is has been already cut off right as interest which is in this case $332.45 so that's it I had for I had for this video uh, if you have any questions please comment down below if you like this video please give it a thumbs up do consider checking out other videos and I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel thank you